morning. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening from wherever you are joining us around the world. This is the 2022 Teach for Nigeria Incubation Hub Pitch Competition happening today, the 21st day of September 2022 here at the Enterprise Development Center, Lagos Business School, Lagos State, Nigeria. We want to welcome each and every one of you for finding time to join us for this event. We do not take it for granted. We especially acknowledge all those who are physically here with us and all those that are joining us online on our various platform. We are on Facebook, we are on YouTube, and all of our social media handles. Welcome to this day's event. We want to specially acknowledge and recognize all those who are joining us, our Teach for Nigeria board members who are joining us from around the world, our ambassadors, the CEO of Teach for Nigeria, Falawe Omikunle, our Teach for Nigeria members of staff who are here with us and also joining us for this event, the head of training, leadership and development, Flora Gaptoni, and all other Teach for Nigeria staff. We welcome you specially. We also want to welcome to this event all of our sponsors, SNEPCO, our partners, our donors, those of you who are part of what we are doing at Teach for Nigeria and supporting the work that we do. We greatly appreciate you for all that you do. We also want to specially acknowledge Faith Foundation, who is also been part of us today, also to acknowledge our fellows, our 2022, our 2020 fellows, our second year fellows, who are also joining us today. I also like to welcome you specially to this event, everyone who is part of us here, all of the Teach for All Network partners who are also joining us live for this event. So this is the second cohort of the Teach for Nigeria Alumni Incubation Hub. The first cohort took place in 2020, and we had um, 20 incubators, 20 innovators who were part of that. And from it, we had two winners, um, Booker Clan as well as No Box uh, Initiative. These were the first two winners of this event. So for this year, we had well over 30 applications. And these were amazing initiatives from our alumni that passed through the application process, out of which we got 10 of them. And then out of that 10 that started this incubation program, today we have our five finalists. Please, let's put our hands together for this amazing young men and women who today will be pitching their ideas to us. So my name is Michael Yoko, and I am going to be the master of this ceremony. Thank you very much. I want to move straight to uh, the next item on our program of event, which is the introduction of our judges. So those who are on the panel of judges would like to introduce to them and to us. So please, I would like you to appreciate them when I introduce them. So first we have Dr. Isa Omagu. Dr. Isa is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Progress Payments Limited. He presently is a faculty member of the Enterprise Development Center, Pan-Atlantic University. Please put your hands together for Dr. Isa once more. Also on the panel is Mr. Ayodeji Falokbe. Please, Mr. Ayodeji is the Principal Consultant at Reverend Tract. Reverend Tract is short for Revenue Strategy. He is someone who is a strategist. He helps to avoid disruptions in businesses and startups and then help them, founders, to accelerate growth and avoid business critical mistakes. So he has several years of experience in the business development sector. Please, once again, let's appreciate Mr. Falokbe. Also, a part of our judges is Mrs. Ade Dolakbo Oshuntoye. She is the founder and executive director of Dolly Children Foundation. She, is, she has her work alongside A-Class team where she leads the organizational strategy and management and has impacted directly over 22,070 children in 25 communities in Lagos and Ogun State. 
to benefit from a variety of development initiatives. So she is um, a fellow of the Young African Leaders Initiative, West Africa Regional Center, a U.S. government initiative, and a recipient of one of the best three awardees of her cohort in the Women in Management, Business, and Public Service. Women, please. please, let's put our hands together for Mrs. Ade Dolakbo. Also with us as a member of this panel is Mr. Fedi Adimefe. He is a creative entrepreneur focused on animation, games, and blockchain co ecosystem. He leads one of Africa's most promising innovation storytelling companies called Magic Capex Studio. Please let's put our hands together for Fedi. He is he was a beneficiary of the Future Awards, Nigeria's Best 100, and was inducted as a guardian of the future by President Goodluck Jonathan in 2014. Please, let's appreciate him. He made it to the most influential people of African descent, the list of 100 most influential people in the global creative space in 2021. Please, let us appreciate uh, Mr. Fedi. And also, the last but not the least, who is a part of our panel of judges, is Ms. Olua Tosin Oluwoyeye Taiwo. Please, let's put our hands together for her. She is an advocate of quality education. She is uh, for all children and an education consultant and motivational speaker. She is um, a founder of Street to School Initiative. Please, let's put our hands together for her. Street to School is a non-governmental organization that supports the academic aspiration of vulnerable children in Nigeria. In 2015, Oluwa Tosin established a tuition-free school, Comenius Nursery and Primary School, to meet up with the growing number of out-of-school children in rural areas. Please, we can appreciate her. We can appreciate her. She... She was recognized as one of the 60 Nigerian women making social impact by the Business Day newspaper. Please, once again, a round of applause for Olua Tosin. Thank you very much. We thank you for joining us for this event. And we appreciate you. We know that your wealth of knowledge would help these innovators to truly accelerate their impact in the social enterprises that they have. So... Thank you very much once again. So we're not going to waste our time. We'll just move straight to the next item on our program of event, which is going to be the welcome address by the CEO of Teach for Nigeria, Ms. Folawe Omekunle. Please let us sit back and listen to her. Good day, good morning everyone. My name is Folawe Omikunle. I'm a social entrepreneur and I'm the Chief Executive Officer at Teach for Nigeria. It is really a delight to be here at the 2022 Incubation Hub Pitch Competition. And I'd like to welcome our board members who are here, ambassadors, our panel of judges, um, friends, donors of Teach for Nigeria, staff of Teach for Nigeria, and the incredible participants you know, who have come this far on this journey. A warm welcome to you all. Teach for Nigeria really is a non-profit organization that is focused on ensuring that one day all children in Nigeria will be able to access quality education that allows them to unlock and fulfill their potential. And we know that that is a huge and a mammoth vision. And so in getting to that vision, how we approach our work is by recruiting dynamic young leaders um, who we train and place to teach in high need schools for two years. And then beyond the two years, we leverage the experience, their insight, and their knowledge and passion into contributing to, to advancing our vision to ensure that all children are able to access quality education. And that's what we've been doing for the last five years. And so the Incubation Hub is an initiative of Teach for Nigeria that is focused on accelerating our vision. And I mean accelerating by 
the sense that we understand that we alone cannot solve the issues of inequality and inequity in education. We, we recognize the importance of working alongside dynamic and um, several um, individuals who are creating solutions and who are fostering um, our ability to, to attain our vision. And so the incubation hub is focused on supporting our alumni to scale and to grow and expand their social impact projects. During the two-year fellowship of, um, of, um, of Teach for Nigeria, our alumni, our fellows are required to carry out a Be The Chain project. And that Be The Chain project usually for most of them after they graduate from the fellowship, you know, they continue to commit themselves to those projects. The idea of the Incubation Hub is to support um, alumni who have now graduated from the fellowship to continue to grow their, their social innovation. So the Incubation Hub is a three-month intensive um, enterprise training program and that is focused on providing the knowledge, the skills, the mindset, the tools um, that is needed to really grow your businesses and to really build a solid foundation um, and, and, and put things in place that allow and enable for our alumni social impact projects to grow and to be sustainable. And so we launched this year with 10 participants, um, 10 participants who have gone through an ideation virtual um, event, you know, that allowed for us to select and nominate um, all of these 10 individuals. They went through a training program and out of the 10, five have been shortlisted who will now be participating in today's pitch um, event. And so those five um, um, participants, you know, you all are already winners, I, I, I must say, but I think it's important to acknowledge that the work that they've done cuts across different sectors, you know, but all still directed at our vision and, and our core purpose of lifting children out of poverty, of ensuring that children are able to fulfill their potential and unlock um, their potential. There is a um, um, on this, on uh, the five programs, the School Linka that is founded by Kayode Oluwashio. There is also Talent Mind by Aramide Kayode. There is also Brace Up the Young by Obasanjo Fajemirokun. There is the Virtual Excursion by Odinaka Chuku Umosu. And finally, Smart Garden Concept by Zainab Akintayo projects that have such impactful possibilities. I think it's important at this junction to acknowledge um, that, again, the reason why we're doing this work that we're doing and the reason why the Incubation Hub um, program is important is really in recognition that our work cannot be done alone. There is no single solution to addressing inequity and inequality in education. We require the work of dynamic leaders like some of um, these participants that I've just mentioned and many more alumni and many more individuals who are not even part of the Teach for Nigeria Fellowship. And I think it's really in alignment to that vision and to the understanding that we're only going to get there through collective efforts, through collective action and leadership. And so permit me at this junction to thank our donors who have made this possible. A big thank you to SNEPCO. You've been with us from the very beginning and you're with us even till now. And I really just want to say a big thank you for making this possible. And to our implementing partners, the Enterprise Development Center of the Pan-Atlantic University, we say a big thank you for all of your support and your investment. And we recognize, you know, just how much you've equipped our participants, you know, who have gone through this program. And um, thank you so much for you, for all joining us, for joining us this beautiful morning. And a big, big thank you to our judges. And um, we're, we're, we know that um, the, the two winners, the two winners will emerge, you know, from the incredible work that you'll be doing today. And we really appreciate your judgment and we appreciate your time and your efforts that you've taken, you know, to be here with us this morning. Thank you very much and do enjoy the rest of the event.
Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That was the CEO, Teach for Nigeria, Folawe Omikunle. So just as she has mentioned, the incubation hub focuses on um, five different areas. So we have the professional development for teachers. We have um, education in emergencies or conflict. There is early childhood or special needs education. There is poverty eradication and economic empowerment as well as research and policy advocacy. These are the five focus areas that we take our initiatives from to be part of this incubation hub. So once again, we want to welcome you. We're going straight to the main reason why we are here today, and which is the pitch then. We have amazing innovators here who are going to be pitching their initiatives before the panel of judges. And we have five minutes for presentation. So you have five minutes to present. And then afterwards, take comments from the panel of judges. And so we move and continue. So please, we'd love that you stick to the time that has been allotted to you. And so that we do everything that we ought to. So as we can see around us, we have posters of this five innovators who would be pitching for us today and we're going to begin our first presentation which will be taken by Obasanjo Fajemirokun. He is the founder of Brace Up the Young which is founded in 2018 a youth-led organization focused on creating, educating and mentoring young people to become innovative and accountable leaders in Nigeria. So the time and the floor is yours now. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, judges. Um, my name is Obasanjo Fajemirokun, and I'm the founder of Brace Up the Young. Uh, Brace Up the Young is a nonprofit organization focused on educating and mentoring young people living in low income communities to become innovative leaders. And today I present to you our Better School Project. So, according to UNESCO, over 60% of pupils are not learning even though they are in school. And due to this data, we have been working in schools since 2018, and we went ahead to take research in over 30 schools across eight states in Nigeria, finding out from the management, the teachers, on what is the causes of poor learning outcome and the academic performance of students. And from our data, which shows various problems such as teachers' training, low morale of teachers, we also find constant in these schools that poor learning environment is a major problem. The teachers are demotivated due to the fact that some of them are teaching under trees, some schools, children sit on the floors, and a lot of this affects how the teacher is able to communicate and pass that knowledge from the teacher to the student. The management also accepts that if they could have better facilities, including digital facilities, learning could become better and the student's academic perform, um, performance could become better. And this is why, from our data, we incubated the BTY Better School Project. BTY Better School Project is aimed at solving the poor learning outcome in Nigerian schools by providing or by renovating 60 classrooms in 20 schools, majorly focusing on southwestern Nigeria. And this is meant to provide access to quality education and improve learning outcomes for over 5,000 children who will be using these classrooms over the point of five years from our data. And we also looked at that during the COVID-19, a lot of children were not able to learn due to the fact that they were not used to the digital facilities. So we incubated also in our plan to build solar-powered digital laboratories for secondary schools, which will be benefiting from our project majorly to ensure that should in case there's a lockdown in the future, they won't lose out on learning. And even if there is no lockdown, 21st century skills will be passed to them, majorly digital skills. And this is our first project we did. In September 2022, just about a week ago, we launched our first BTY Better School project. The picture above shows the state of a classroom at Yanoyesi, Ogun State, where children are learning. And this is where the community kids learn with over 50 children in these three classrooms. And this is the outcome 
of our renovation when we were able to renovate it with support from the pollination grant we renovated the three classrooms and as of on monday the kids were they resumed and they were happy for their new buildings um, the project was supported very well by the community elders so how do we measure success which has been a major question for us um, we measure success by the number of classrooms renovated per year um, yearly we aim to renovate between four to five schools which is if you multiply it by three that is 12 to 15 classrooms um, per year and the number of students who utilize this renovated classroom majorly our focus is not just on the building but the outcome of what this building provides to the students and we also measure number of students whose grade increase due to the availability of these renovated buildings as we have collected data from these schools the one we just renovated we have their previous results and we'll be collecting data yesterday i was still on the call with the teachers and the management of the school to find out what was the feeling of the students how are the teachers taking the classroom and how are they enjoying the new building how is this supporting learning now how do we scale our project we have done one school which is just basically three classrooms we discovered we could still do 57 classrooms in 19 primary and secondary schools in Ogun State, Nigeria. To be more strategic, we'll be partnering with Teach for Nigeria as our um, an alumnus of Teach for Nigeria. And um, from our data, it shows over 40% of the schools Teach for Nigeria fellows are teaching are actually in need of renovations in various states in Nigeria, basically Lagos and Ogun State. And concerning our funding, we are in two second and the third stage of basically $5,000 two grants. Um, basically World Connect and Global Youth Mobilization Grant, which we are hoping it comes out positively. And our future partnerships are actually majorly with a global partner called Pencils of Promise. Pencils of Promise have actually, their target yearly is to build 100 schools yearly. So we are in contact with um, Brian and he is the major person we have been discussing with, sending him our updates and learning from them. We hope to be able to get them to work with us in Nigeria to build schools and not just renovate schools in future time. So revenue, where do this money come from? How do we get this money? To renovate three classrooms, we need approximately 2.5 million with the current inflation rates. And how do we get our money is one, training services. We offer training services to corporate organizations and also to schools. We do trainings based on um, digital skills training. We do training on teacher's education. We do training on corporate motivations. And we have offered training to services to teach for Nigeria um, Tech Bootcamp, which was recently concluded last month. And we have also offered trainings to the United States Consulate in Nigeria, the sci-fi program. We offer training to two projects on the sci-fi programs. And we have been able to generate over 400,000 this year alone in our training services. We also are getting into sales of merchandise by selling T-shirts, bags, school bags, and various educational materials to raise funding. Most of these funds, profit of these funds will be channeled into our projects. And we have a training platform where we train young people to become innovative leaders. Yeah, thank you. Let's, let us put our hands together for Obasanjo Fajami Rokon. Thank you very much. So we don't know if you have one question from the audience. We just take one question if there is before we listen to the judges. If there is none, okay, you have a question. Thank you very much. So the government partnership is a major aim for us and um, due to my experience working as a Teach for Nigerian Fellow, I've built relationship majorly in Ogun State and this is why our pilot project started in Ogun State. I'm in good, um, um, good connection with SUBEP, which we are renovating primary schools at first. We have good relationship with them. The director actually knows me personally and we have been able to pitch our projects to them. We have run one or two projects approved by SUBEP, so I have good standing and good relationship with them. Yesterday, I was still on the call with Mr. Ademi regarding our project where we are discussing further partnerships and how to go against and so majorly what the governments are concerned about is publicity how do you share these stories outside so i've been having a lot of discussion with them regarding how do we put this story outside without making the government looks the negative way 
and how do we further build relationship? And I could say for now, we have very good standing with them and they are very well ready to work with us and are currently working with us. Thank you very much. So we can take comments if there is none. Okay, um, good morning. Well done. Uh, Obasanjo. So my, my question is around um, maintenance. Uh, when you build a school, because if you have to tie to corporate uh, sponsors, most of the times um, on the corporate side, our interest is sustainability. So if you build a school and you move on to the next school, what is the plans you have to ensure that whatever you're setting in place is not going to deteriorate? There's still the diminishing um, um, effect. So how do you mitigate against that to at, at least extend the lifeline of that? The second aspect, when you spoke about potential sources of revenue, you do trainings, right? And just to be curious, it might also help you if you haven't figured it out. In terms of the training you do, are you certified to train and do you give certification upon training, right? That would potentially increase the viability of your subscribers and ultimately be more revenue. But I wanted you to speak to that. So thank you very much. Um, your first question on sustainability and majorly how do we maintain the school. So um, initially in 2019, we were doing what we call situational projects just doing projects in different schools and we find out tracking this project and maintaining this project is a problem so we built in 2019 our community of schools the first school we renovated we have been working with them for over two years and they are in our community of school so our condition for renovating the school is first of all you must own the land if you are a private if you are under the government we must have good partnership with the government schools to ensure we don't renovate that building and you live there the next year secondly to ensure they maintain it, our community of schools management are supported. We stay with them. We have conversations with them. We build relationship before investing in their schools because we are investing millions of Naira of, of, of funders' money and part of our revenue generated that could divert it to other projects into them. So part of their obligation is to ensure proper maintenance of the school. And in every area we do uh, our school project, we recruit volunteers in the area that work with us as either full-time executive with time being and these volunteers go back to check. So we are very bent on data collection. And because of this, the school know we come. So even last year when we distributed books to their students, we came back almost every two, two months to ask, what are the books being used for? Can we see the notes they are writing? What are the outcomes? What are their results? So this has helped us keep relationship with the school and ensuring that this is maintained. So the school is having a commitment to ensure the building is properly maintained. And we are also factoring in funding in a way to keep and do little structural adjustments or changing of chairs or boards if they are damaged within one to two years. Okay, so, so the one on certification, yes. So personally, um, I'm being certified to train on various, from various institutions. I've been trained by African Leadership Academy and under the trainer training program and also be trained under um, the Pan-Atlantic University. Um, but however, for Full certification, we are looking at partnering with institutions that we can use their logo and say we are under them to give validity to our certificate. So for now, we just put the certificate, we print our certificate majorly with our logo and with endorsement of our partners for that particular training. Yes. Hold on, this is a very laudable project, and um, why I'm saying that is because
my concern is that you know when it comes to, you need to also consider the community stakeholders because they are the ones that will take care of that community so i think you should strengthen that area too aside yeah thank you yes uh, can i share a bit of that yes so for our last project we we executed we ensured not just to is involved but the community development association the cda actually sent a representative the treasurer of the association also we also conversed with community the religious leaders the building was launched actually by a pastor in the community a major known pastor in the community that adds other pastors they have these their meetings so this is our way of doing community engagement aside just engaging suburb at abiyokuta we also go as far as engaging the cda in short our block um, that was used to do most of the re renovation one of the person that contracted was on the board of the was the cda executive so this is to ensure the sustainability yes ma'am yes, ma the funding from corporate organization no matter how small that community is whether they are big or small they have something to give i've worked with stakeholders that carpenters they give us their uh, maybe five planks you know they give us water we borrow the generator for the period so it should reflect in your they are immaterial but it goes a long way in covering a lot on your budget All right, yeah, Burke. All right, um, I have two minutes, correct? All right, first, I'll just have a quick conversation. Why should anybody support your project with their funds? So um, we want you to support our project with our funds because we are changing the lives of children in that community. Let's, let's talk business. First, some of these people, let's okay. assume they don't care about all of that. Okay. Let's assume you're talking to the businessmen and businesswomen and let's say the banks, the telecoms, yes. let's talk reality. So why should they care? What do they get in return? You should sponsor our project because it gives you visibility locally. We have over 8,000 reach. So goodwill. In our local, local goodwill. Way. Yes, goodwill. How do you secure and measure that local goodwill? So we have a chain of network in the community we work with. We engage the CDAs. We engage the religious leaders. And the name of the donor is clearly inscribed on each classroom to show this is the donor that did it. The have you been around this building? You've seen the names of some banks yes. and all of that. So remember one of your partners asked you about how you publicize and how you manage the PR. Yes. So what is the strength of your PR campaign? That's one. Yeah. And I have 30 seconds left. So what I'll suggest that you see a lot of these corporate organizations is good to say, you know, they want to be charitable and all of that. But in reality, when they get back to the office, it's about the bottom line. How does the PR affect their bottom line? Get goodwill and all of that. So if you can find a way to improve, quantify, and monetize the PR, if you need to have a special PR department that has relationship with the media outlets, TV, radio, newspaper, digital, the more noise you make about your project and the positivity and the goodwill that is attached to your project, you will not need to chase anybody to go ask for funding. So you'd have created a product that is in demand and then people are going to come to you. So that's what I suggest because I thank believe you, with sir. funding, your operations are straightforward. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We are pleased. Let's put our hands together for Obasanjo Fadjemi Rokun. Thank you very much for that amazing presentation. So we're going to speed up. We'll just take the next um, pitch. And this time around, we'll be having the presentation by um, Olu Washeun Kayode. He is the founder of School Inca and EdTech Social Enterprise. So, Kayode, your five minutes starts now. Hi everyone, my name is Oluwashion Kaede and I'm the founder of School Inca. And I would like to introduce you to Salome. Salome is a 52 years old school owner. In fact, she owns Karina School that is located in the low income community area of Ikorodu in Lagos State. And she has 10 teachers in her school. Earlier this year, um, the result of the primary six common entrance examination came in and then 75% of the primary six pupils in Salome School actually failed. And after proper investigation, we found out that this was due to poor teaching quality that exists in that school. And this is because the 10 teachers in Salome School have not attended training in the last 12 years. 
There is a shocking statistics by UNESCO. It states that 36% of teachers in Africa are not well trained. And I'm going to rephrase that. It means that one out of three teachers are not competent enough to drive quality learning for their students. And you all in this room will agree with me that if we must deliver quality education to millions of children across this continent, Africa, then we need to invest heavily in teachers' continuous professional development. School Inca is changing this narrative. We have our AI-powered platform that actually provides high quality and free continuous professional development, that's teacher training, to teachers and school leaders, and also help schools hire well-trained educators to join their workforce. And we do this by working with education experts to design high-quality training programs and deliver it through our in-person experiences and our dedicated online learning platform. Now, the market for the global e-learning industry is huge. Just last year, $315 billion was traded in this market and is expected to grow at the rate of 20% annually. We have 60 million teachers worldwide, 7 million teachers who are registered in Africa, 50, sorry, 50,000 schools, and this data is from UNESCO GEM report. And our target over the next two years is just 1% of that market. That's around 70,000 teachers and then 500 schools. This is how we make money. I know I mentioned that we offer free training, but we also have premium access membership that we offer to teachers so that they are able to access job opportunities. And they pay just $10 per year to be able to access that. We also offer the, our school workforce solution to schools. They pay a fee to use our complete workforce solution so that they can access all their hiring and training needs in just one place. We also deploy an impact fundraising strategy to secure funding from donors, from partners, impact investors, anyone who is interested in transforming education across the African continent. Traction so far, we've delivered training to more than 3,500 teachers and school leaders in our in-person and online learning experiences. And we have partnered with more than 50 trainers to actually deliver this training, thereby potentially actually improving learning experiences for more than 26,000 students that these teachers serve. Our team is a very small team, but very powerful. I lead this team. I have Omoladi Alabi, who's our learning support associate. Leia Abiola and does everything in communication. Ruth Oliwe, has, she's our program assistant, and Ola Tunji Abayomi is our go-to guy when it comes to tech. We also have, I mentioned, our faculty of trainers and then over 50 you know, growth associates that are helping us push this work. We have key milestones over the next 12 months. We want to build more training courses and build a technology that is worthy of our mission. We want to develop a marketing strategy that actually works. We want to constitute an advisory board of experts that will help us champion this work over the next six years thereabout. And we want to raise more funds. And I'm excited to be pitching here for the One Million Naira Fund to hire a growth manager that would help us lead our growth to over 10,000 educators and 50 schools over the next six months. This is my contact details on the screen. Um, so if there's anybody here who's interested in you know, what's going on, in actually supporting this work and partnering with us to reach many more teachers across the continent, transforming education actually requires multi-level partnerships. And we're happy to work with you to scale high-quality teacher training using technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Coyote, we have 48 seconds more before his five minutes elapse. So thank you very much. We'll just delve in. We'll just take questions from the audience, just one, and then we'll listen to the judges. So any question from the audience? Okay. So Coyote, I think that's a very powerful pitch. Um, and I like that you linked it to, you know, how students are not performing well with a case study. Um, my question actually is, what you've spoken about is empowering teachers, you know, supporting them. Is there any strategy to check how that translates to, you know, learning outcomes in the classroom? Thank you so much. Um, one of, uh, the part of our monitoring and evaluation framework that we are building, just one part of it is actually measuring teacher effectiveness on student learning outcomes. And the truth is our work goes because, I mean, you can't use student learning outcomes to actually gauge how effective a teacher is. And that because we place a lot of premium on process over output. Um, teachers can work hard in the classroom and still the children is not, they are not doing well because there are a lot of other factors at play. But that's one of it. And the way we do this for the teachers in our premium access membership, there's a baseline assessment that their students go through while they start learning with us. 
And so we have another end-line survey or end-line assessment that we also administer to be able to measure the progress of this child from A to B, how this teacher has been able to move them across when they started learning on school income with specific regards to the skill that they are acquiring. So for example, if a teacher is actually learning how to administer assessment, so what we are looking at is what are the kind of assessment, how has the assessment improved over time? We also work with the school supervisors to also ask them what they think about the teacher since they started you know, working with us. There's a school in Koro that we did that with, and they were able to measure the effectiveness over time. One thing that we found out is the fact that 86% of teachers who have learned on our platform said their learning goals were met. That's a survey we conducted on over 300 teachers. And 100% of them told us that they will recommend schooling that to another colleague of theirs because they feel like learning conditions or learning conditions are actually improved in their own classrooms. Yeah. We don't have... We don't have any testimonial from students because we don't have direct access to students. We work with teachers. But that's something we need to definitely work on. But we don't have testimonial from We have their school term results and how it has improved, but we don't have verbal, anecdotal evidence from the students on you know, what has happened so far. But that's something we really need to work on. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hear from the judges. That was actually a powerful one. Well done. I love the energy. Um, I know access to technology is huge, especially when you uh, come to teachers, uh, teachers in low cost, low income areas, teachers teaching um, vulnerable children and all that. So I'm going to ask you, how do these teachers access these online courses? Because electricity is a big thing, <laughs> access to electricity, and also the data subscription. How do you um, solve this redo to ensure that they have access? Thank you very much. Uh, we're very aware of the huge digital divide. And so that's why we are deploying even low-tech means to reach these teachers. For schools that are in our school partnership program, what they get as a package when they are onboarded is the fact that they have access to a memory card that has all our courses loaded on it. So they don't need internet to actually access this training if they don't want to use internet or bond their data. With their memory card on their computer, their mobile phones, smartphones, they can be able to access this training without internet. And so what we do regularly is definitely, if there's an update on this course, we definitely reach out to the school, exchange the memory cards, collect the ones they have before, and give them a new one. So that's the plan, actually, to edge against the internet access. But one thing I also want to say is the fact that Africa is promising. We have high internet penetration rate in Africa. And something I used to share is the fact that even common men on the street are having access to internet. Um, you go to the marketplaces, you see Glow, you know, advertising their data, AWUF data to market women and common men on the street. It's because there's a market there, and that's why they're doing that. So we're really banking on that huge internet penetration rate and moving on with that revolution and hoping that our solution actually moves along that trajectory as well, where we have internet more and more in these local communities. You talked about, I love the idea. It's um, the idea of uh, giving them memory card. Then how do you monitor and ensure that the, you know, because teachers can, I'm sorry, uh, we work with them as well. Yeah. Uh, they will tell you they're going to do this. So how do you ensure that they are learning? Because there's no... No teaching takes place if no, uh, there's no learning. So we need to ensure that there's learning. These teachers are actually doing what they are supposed to do. So on your part, how do you ensure that the teachers are making use of what they have access to? Yes, and thank you very much for that question. That's why I mentioned that this is specifically for our schools on our school partnership program. So there's always someone who actually is like a licensing officer in the school that gives us reports on what the teachers are doing. This person might be in the management or another teacher in that school, and they tell us this is what they do. We're still figuring out the best way to be more granular in that monitoring and evaluation um, that it will not go up so many resources and make us run at loss. But yeah, that's what we do. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I liked um, the presentation, and I think the concept is quite um, um, clear and simple. Um, in terms of um, scaling it, because you just mentioned the Korodu and seem to just run around the Korodu. And this is a technology-enabled um, solution. Yeah. 
So how do you intend to um, scale it across the country? Or you objective to just stay within Lagos, given that there are 36 states in the country? So what's, what's your uh, plan for um, expansion, for growth? And then two, and I guess it's um, applicable to almost everyone that's going to make a pitch here today is, how do you mitigate key man risk? Mitigate what, sir? Key man risk. Key man risk. Yes. All right. Um, I don't know if you can please explain what key man risk is. Okay, so you are the founder, you are the, um, everything is around you. So when you step aside tomorrow, God forbid, what happens to the, the initiative? All right, I'll answer the second question first. I'm actually in search of a co-founder. Um, and that's one way I'll be able to like mitigate the scheme and risk as well, getting a co-founder on board that we can lead the solution together. And I'm happy to mention here that this is a Pan-African solution starting from Nigeria. Um, we have our solutions being deployed in several states across Nigeria. We have teachers using the platform in Lagos, in Abuja. Uh, Mrs. Karina is just one of the many Mrs. Karina or the many Mrs. Salome that we have. Um, so it's a tech-enabled solution. We're already in our digital transformation. And so anybody from anywhere can actually access the technology and learn by themselves without support or without too much support. So it's a Pan-African solution. It's easily scalable with the power of technology. Yes, just like you have your Coursera and your EDX, EDX Udemy, yes, you can access it. All right, real quick. Now, first, you, if you get a co-founder, you haven't el eliminated key man risk. No, you just, it just means you split it into two, 50%, so it's still there. So how to eliminate that, get processes in place, and you're playing a role so that you can easily be replaced. Please keep that in mind. So SOPs, your processes, document them, digitize them. And what I'll suggest regarding the memory card issue, you see, you're going to have to build a new network a new channel to distribute that memory card. We can't afford that. But remember that there are organizations who go to China and other countries to buy and import memory cards and distribute already in the market. You can buy them almost at every spot. So it will be to their advantage if your content is already in that memory card by default. And it's not costing them anything extra. So just make the data available to them. They put in their memory card. If anything, they can put it on a packaging, which should help their memory card sell further. However, tracking it, that's your relationship with them, which means it's also possible for you to have conversations with mobile phone manufacturers, the low end, all the cheaper ones, and have your content and your data on that platform. Now, keep in mind that you're running on two platforms, digital and then traditional. So the memory card is traditional. So for the digital, you have a lot of competition because your platform is not, in quotes, with all the respect, is not fantastic compared to your competitors. But if you can make the most noise about it, then it seems fantastic, which means you have to take a lot of energy into your digital marketing strategy. Know who you're targeting and target them and convince them that you are the best person for them to learn from. And then finally, you see these teachers, with all the respect to them, they want to get certification, not because they want to be the best teachers in the world. We're human. They want to make more money. Yeah. So how does your certification help them get a better job as a teacher? We had a conversation about this, correct? Yeah. Where you move them from where they are to the next level, which means your system is like a conduit, improving the teachers, which means they get better jobs. So if you want them to actually go and learn, how does it improve their lives personally? So keep in mind that you have to map out all the stakeholders and find out what each one of them will benefit. If you can write and sort out what each one will benefit, you cannot get them to cooperate. So I hope that helps a little bit. Very, very. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, how do you deal with standardization on that? Then this is something to think about. I personally feel um, you could ponder around looking at your business model. You're giving membership for paid, and you're giving courses for free. Now, to my mind, I think the incentive or the strength of your platform is in continuous learning, and the value proposition is not in being part of a community but in upgrading my knowledge base, right? 
Why don't you think about an enterprise solution that the schools should pay for for their teachers yeah. in yeah. such a way that it becomes, a, um, uh, you can have yeah. that steady revenue. Yeah. And on the other hand, or even if they have to pay for themselves, I love the idea of having to give them like grades so that they go from level one, level two, level three, right? But if it's an enterprise solution, you know the number of schools, um, you have a, a, a yearly subscription as it were to keep them coming and keep growing, right? I don't know if there's a way to tweak so that you can have that model, that revenue captured. Right. Over time, when you get your par partnerships and um, um, you can then have like endorsements where yeah. schools that are endorsed by the platform can help a particular certain type of um, advantage, that can count for more schools to subscribe. Right. So um, maybe you should speak to that. Thank you very much for that. I mean, it's a lot of advices and questions and things to think about. Um, for You mentioned the enterprise solution. We have the school workforce solution that does that. Offers all training and hiring needs in one place for schools. So schools are able to offer a solution to their teachers to learn, and they subscribe a yearly fee. And then, of course, if they want to hire using our platform as well, they can have access to a pool of well-trained teachers, teachers who have gone through our platform. In terms of standardization, it's a long work, but of course, it's something that we actually place as priority. We are currently in talks with the Lagos coordinator of TRC, and that's Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria, to get sort of like standards from them, and also build a schooling car TRC and bridge program that would endorse our own programs and make our programs more up to standard because they will review our courses and then give us those approvals for all those courses. We are also working with the Master Teacher Program. This is a program that has been tested in seven countries across Africa. I was in Rwanda last month to be able to have conversations with the guys at Africa Leadership University on how we can build these partnerships. So we know that partnerships, credibility is very, very important. Micro, um, micro certification is very, very Key. We need to build this micro network, and we're really working on that. And I will appreciate any contacts from anybody here if we can, that we can speak with to be able to do that. Um, I think you mentioned around the community as well, like we're offering free courses and also making the membership um, paid. Um, so what we are doing really, because we have an impact goal, what we want to do really is to ensure that teachers, as much as possible, do not have barriers to accessing professional development whatsoever. So we have teachers who come to our platform by themselves, like B2C, straight directly, and then they are able to access the learning and join the access membership so that they can have access to job opportunities and other of, um, benefits that we offer. But we also have schools as well that pay us to actually, like I mentioned before, uh, but really the goal is still the fact that we want thousands of teachers to be able to access learning um, without any barrier. Why they, you know, with their premium access membership, they can access certificates, just like that. We have government teachers, but we are not working with government yet. So government teachers are registering by themselves to sign up. They are attending our in-person training programs, but no partnership with government yet. Yes. Thank you. Conversation with the special advisor to the governor of Lagos State, Mrs. Aditola Salah, about our solution. But we know our government works. It's a lot of processes in between. We are trying our best to you know, get involved with government because that's where the numbers are, really, um, if we can work with them. So this is something that we're really working on. Yeah. So to encourage you, don't get bogged down by some of those fears. Just enter the market and keep moving. Thank you. You, you cross the bridge as you go there. Thank you so much. Please let us put our hands together for Kaya De Olua Shown. Thank you so much. And thank you for all of your comments. We would dive into the next presentation, and that will be taken by Zainab. Zainab Akintayo is the founder of Smart Garden Concepts, and we will listen to her. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Zainab Akintayo, uh, the founder of. Um, so Smart Garden Concept um, is a nutrition intervention project, and we are aiming to improve household food security of poor and low-income families.
Okay, so the problem in Nigeria, millions of children go to school hungry every day. And it's difficult for these kids to learn on an empty stomach. They get distracted easily. Also, malnutrition disorders affect more than 42% of school children in Nigeria. And it's also responsible for 49% absenteeism of school-age children. This is, um, support, uh, this is confirmed by UNICEF, and it's something we have seen in our experience, um, experience in classroom, where children skip school um, because they cannot afford um, food to eat and tend to look for a way to put food on the table and support the family. So our solution, a smart garden concept, um, we are establishing school garden and as an avenue to train students on how they can establish a backyard garden in their homes. So we'll be given seeds, compost, and other planting materials to the students to establish the garden in their homes. And um, we know that st some students do not have access to free land. We are encouraging them that we can they can use broken buckets, plastics, sacks um, to plant, to have a backyard garden. This is to enable them to have access to food at all times. Um, so... Our approach is um, sensitization of the stakeholders. For our stakeholders, um, we'll be having meeting before, um, before starting the program with um, students, parents, um, parent teachers association, the teachers, the school owners, who we'll let them know how smart garden works and how important it is for them to have a smart a backyard garden in their homes. Then we'll establish in the next one year, we'll establish school garden and we want to cover um, three cities in Nigeria, Ibadan, Lagos, and Abelkuta. So we're, we'll be establishing two, pop, two gardens in two schools, two secondary schools from each of the cities. And we'll train the beneficiaries. Uh, we'll train them on how they can have a backyard garden, how, do, how to have a backyard garden in their homes. And our target is 90 students from each of the selected schools. Uh, then we'll move on to distributing seeds to our beneficiaries and compost and other planting materials. Then our beneficiaries will then move on to establish the backyard garden in their homes. And in the next one year, we are targeting about 540 um, households in our selected schools. So for our impact, uh, our impact aligned with SDG2, which is um, zero hunger. So um, there will be reduction in the rate of hunger and nutrition among secondary school students, then promotion of healthy nutrition among the students and their families. And um, it's also aligned with SDG4, which is the provision of quality education. We are improving students' performance, um, students' educational performance and their interest in science. Then we are also provide, uh, providing an, um, a, an environment for practical learning.
Breakdown for the smart block, um, basic plan. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zainab. We would want to we'll just take only one question from the audience so that. Um, um, thank you, Zainab. I have two, two in one question. Um, the first one I'd like to know the kind of seeds the crops that are uh, involved in the smart garden. And then secondly, you made mention of uh, absenteeism when you started. I want to know, uh, I want you to talk more on that. And then how do you ensure that this smart garden is actually not detracting the learners from learning in the classroom? Um, so thank you. Um, so your first question uh, can you confirm that the first one the crops okay so we'll be planting vegetables and fruit um, so we we'll have amaranthos we have ugu we we'll have um, spinach we have um, shoko tete these are the major vegetables that we consume in Nigeria um, and for our, our seed our fruits we have watermelon we are introducing um, cabbage and um, carrots too okay so you mentioned absenteeism. Okay, so um, my experience teaching in the classroom um, in a low-funded school, so we noticed that um, students miss schools. And when you call them, you can see a very intelligent student. The case of Kunle, um, he misses school sometimes twice in a week. And you ask and you be like, oh, we did not have any food to eat. My mommy said I should stay at home. So what happened? I followed my mommy to shop. I was working on um, um, all sorts of things that would not even put food on their table. So students miss school because they cannot afford to eat breakfast before coming. And they have to work so that they can eat um, lunch or dinner, even provide the family with what to eat. So that's that on the absenteeism. What's the next one? Okay, so distraction. Um, so smart, um, if you notice, we notice in the curriculum of the school, so there is um, a timetable fixed for agricultural pra um, practical time, like the farming. But um, the thing is, it's not even being used at all. Students just play um, during this period. So we tend to leverage on this um, timetable to go into farm and train the kids. So it will not it will not um, distract them. It will even add to their practical knowledge in our Greek. And um, it will help them um, know what they are being taught practically. So it's not a distraction. There's a time fix for it. It will not affect other lessons. So 30 seconds from... Oh, is that what she has answered? My question is around... Um, she mentioned... I mean, I recognize the fact that absenteeism is a symptom of what she mentioned, hunger and all of that, but I haven't heard any link between how she hopes her work is going to curb that. More like some sort of tracking or measurement strategy between what I'm doing versus how it's going to solve this problem. And she also mentioned something around um, malnutrition. The government currently in Ogun State does a school feeding program and I mean, everybody can assess that. Um, they say that it, it curbs malnutrition, but there's no evidence to show how this has improved students' nutrition rate. So what do you have in, on, on ground to help check you know, how your work is improving this nutrition problem? Sort of like a measurement strategy around that. So please, Zainab, just hold that and then we'll, we'll take from the court judges. So.
them, thank you, sir. I've just been hearing more of them doing it at home, at home, at home. You know, how do you intend to, you know, I think it's all centered on that measurement. How do you intend to measure your impact? Are you planning to be visiting their homes one after the other, or what's the plan? Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, so for the impact, uh, first, um, we are targeting 15 students from each class. And out of these 15 learners, there is a, um, a student lead that will be taking information from um, the co-learners in the classroom, which will give back to us. So we are expecting the students to plan at the same time. And if it is properly managed, they will get the same growth, um, almost the same growth, but if we are having a student that is having an um, issue with um, germination or any other thing, he or she will report back to student leader in the classroom and they will get back to us. Then we will address this issue. We can come in. We can come into the school, address these issues. And we also have fellows that we leverage on in this school who can also get back to us. We will tell them what to do. So and also from before the beginning of the program, we'll have um, a survey which will take um, the baseline data um, so to measure, okay, their knowledge, how they are doing, and questions around all this. Then after the program, we'll have an endline survey too, just to compare if um, the impact has been felt. Then you mentioned on um, training for the compost. So yes, uh, we are not only training them to reuse their broken brackets, we are also telling them that they can make compost. They can use their food waste to make compost. So it's part of the program. The compost, they will use their, we train them on how to use the food waste at home to make the compost. Sorry, my last question. I studied both things for my first degree. Yes, sir. So I have a bit of understanding on this. Because with what you said now, that means it's the student leader that will visit um, the other learners in that in the 15th to see the health of the plant, right? Yes, they can report, they can report to the student leader, not necessarily visit. But I disagree with that. I disagree with that because he, the student leader is also a fellow student like them. He or she is not experienced to see that this is where maybe there's a change in color and all that. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You need somebody that will an adult that would see that, that that is trained in that to say, okay, when you plant beans, that is expected to come out in maybe in, in so 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 number of days. If it's not growing, by the time even before the days elapse, you know there's something wrong. You know, okay, this is when they should harvest it. And you know, do you understand? Yes, ma'am. I'm um, just to add it's duly noted, but just to add to that, um so we are establishing the school garden to train the students. So the school garden is the platform where we train them. So sometimes even all those issues that they will face at home, they would have experienced it in the garden. But yes, we we'll also leverage on people to go into their homes if you can. All right, thank you, Zainab. Fantastic project. Real quick, how if you talked about a family who can't even afford to pay their bills or eat, and this should help them. So if that family receives this package, how long before they can now afford to feed themselves? Okay, um, so... Just give me a timeline. No, don't tell me about the story, how to get it. Just give me a timeline. One week, two months, three years. Just tell me. So vegetables should be um, ready in two months. Um, so it's not as if they will afford to pay. It. They are eating it. Then they will also make money from the sales of the excess produce that they harvest. So in two months, stops, they should be able to make money. What's the size by of... The, um, 100 gram. We are giving 100 gram of seeds to the students, and 100 gram of seeds should be able to plant. Um, so they will find their own land. I'm um, in their house. So yes, if they don't they have, have land, if they don't, that's why I said if they don't, they will leverage on um, sacks, broken buckets, and um, used tires to plant. So you think that will be enough for them to grow enough fruit for them and vegetables for them to sell? Um, so we are focusing on them consuming it, but if they have excess. Right. This is what I think. I think your project is excellent, but I think the use, how you're executing it might be the challenge. So what I suggest very quick is consider getting an advisory board to guide you. Now, in Nigeria, the GDP, a lot of our revenue comes from oil. The country is trying to move away from 
oil dependence towards agriculture. And right now, predominantly, we have a lot of the northerners already into agriculture. In the southern part of Nigeria, the southeast, southwest, we're more into other aspects, but not so much focused on agriculture. So what I think your project can do is to get the other parts of Nigeria interested in agriculture enough for them to say, you know what, those that actually have that property, that land, that space, can now go into farming instead of going into other types of businesses. However, I don't think these families can benefit directly from it because the same child who you want to be able, who you're talking about him not being able to go to school, we have to spend time farming as well. So he's still going to go to the farm. So in Nigeria, if you focus on organizations that are trying to guide and push Nigerian businesses towards the farming and agricultural sector in the southern part of Nigeria, in the north, that exists already. So your products cannot do well in the north because there's a lot of land and agriculture is not a big issue. But in the southern part of Nigeria, your argument could be, look, I'm trying to get more Nigerians in other parts that are not in the north interested in agri. And because of that, the social impact is, is immense. People are ready to pay for Nigeria to reduce dependence on oil. So I don't think targeting these families directly will achieve the type of social impact you want. Instead, I think it may cause more problems for them. But you have a fantastic project. I love this project. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, to me, it's actually a brilliant project. Thank you. Ask me why. Um, we run a free school for children in a community. And um, in 2020, we did something during COVID. We had to introduce this math farming concept as well. You don't, th there are better ways of farming now that you don't necessarily need land. Yes. So we had to introduce the children to growing crops using sack. You call it back farming. There's a name for it. And plastic. So we had to go and get all of this. And they are cheap and accessible for these children. So doing this, I think I grasp, I understand where you're coming from. You're exposing these children to small-scale farming, understanding the concept of home gardening, which is brilliant. Please, um, I would suggest that you might have to meet with further advisors, as he said, so that they will put you through on how to get the best out of this innovative project. Please keep it Thank up you very and much. well done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Please, let's appreciate Zainab for her presentation. Um, so time is really not on our side. We'll take the next speech, which will be taken by Aramide Kayode. She's the founder of Talent Mine Academy. A round of applause for her, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Aramide Kayode, and I'm the founder of Talent Mine Academy. Today, there are more than 13.2 out of school children in Nigeria. That's a lot of empty desks and a lot of dreams being cut short. The foundational door to accessing better opportunities is knowing how to read and write. And without that, many children are cut out from these, doors of, these opportunities. And that's not the painful part. The most painful part is that even the children that are in school, 80% of them are not getting the relevant skills that they need to thrive. Education empowers people and transforms their thinking. So the rising number of out-of-school children means that every single year, we have fewer people who are able to think independently and solve systemic problems in their communities and the world at large. At Talent Man Academy, we envision a world where every child has access to quality education and better opportunities, irrespective of their socioeconomic background. And we are doing this through two of our programs, our private school scholarship program, where we provide children in low-income communities with access to 12 years of fully funded quality education. However, as much as the Nigerian curriculum we train our kids to be to learn how to read and write, it doesn't necessarily raise them to be independent thinkers and problem solvers. So every week through our life skills enrichment program, we balance the intellectual stimulations that our kids, our kids get in the classroom with access to relevant life skills so that they're able to make better life choices and create change in their communities. Our life skills enrichment program is a four month cohort based program that covers two major touch points, self leadership and community leadership. And we teach them on life skills such as social emotional learning, self-awareness, kindness and empathy, creative problem solving, critical thinking, design thinking, and other life skills. And after that, 
they go ahead to develop and implement a change-making project in their communities. We have put in place effective monitoring and evaluation systems to ensure the quality of our program. First, we have a quarterly academic assessment. Then we have qualitative assessment through in-class observation, parental feedback, feedback from school leaders and teachers. And then we have the life skills assessment that is divided into two, a baseline and endline survey that is issued at the beginning and at the end of every of our Eritrean program. And then we have a portfolio assessment. In this portfolio assessment, we check for the display of life skills in the implementation process of the change-making projects that our kids do. While there are many non-profit organizations in Nigeria and in the world that are focused on solving the access to education problem, only a few percentage focus on the quality of learning that is happening for these children. And you agree with me that we cannot continue to solve the problem of education access in isolation with character development and life skills development. If not, we raise smart kids who use their intellectual powers to commit crimes and other social vices. And this is why we're going granular at Talent Mind Academy, by focusing on improving learning quality and also balancing the intellectual stimulation, the quality of learning with relevant life skills so that the children from low-income communities are able to make better life choices for themselves and change the communities that they live in. We fund our work through the revenue that we generate from the sale of our life skills enrichment commits and then our life skills curriculum. And then we also fund our work through a 10% administration fee that we charge our private school scholarship donors. Then through grants and donations, and then we have a solid work plan that we are working on to improve our organizational and operational structure. Since 2020, we have been able to provide 45 children from low-income communities with access to 12 years of fully funded quality education. And within three months of enrolling these children into school, we've recorded an academic improvement rate of 75%. We have reached over 200 children with our life skills program. And we have so many inspirational stories to tell about our work. But I would like to add like, to the story of Abdullah, the guy in the middle. Abdullah's parents moved in from the north with six of his siblings, and they could not afford to send any of them to school. But within three months of enrolling Abdullah into school, Abdullah reached an academic improvement rate of 93%. Abdullah has not only become such a great academic achiever and student leader, he has also paid his ed education forward by providing um, academic and mentorship support to the younger children and his classmates that live in the community. We want to reach many more children just like Abdullah. And this is why we are applying for the One Million Naira Grant. With the One Million Naira Grant, we'll be able to enroll 40 children into our life skills program and empower them with the life skills that they need to go forward and create change in their communities. These 40 children will get learned skills such as social emotional learning, kindness and empathy, critical thinking, design thinking, creative problem solving, and every skill that they need to create community service projects. And they will go forward to develop, implement these community service projects that will impact the over 5,000 indigenous of the communities that they live in. And you can, if you're interested in learning more about our work, the next slide is supposed to show our website, www.talentsmanacademy.org. And we can partner together if you're, you know, <laughs> if you're connected to my vision. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ramide. Please, a round of applause for her for using exactly five minutes. So, questions from the audience, and then we'll now take comments from the judges. Any question? Okay. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I want to say, first of all, well done. I like the work that you're doing, especially at the community level. So my question is, um, where is your focus state, and are you looking at scale? Because the idea, according to the data from the World Bank, at least 70% of children in Nigeria and um, low, income, low and middle income uh, countries in Africa um, lack the basic foundational literacy and numeracy skills. So how do you intend to scale it up to reach as much children as you can in these communities? So we intend to scale our life skills program. Are you asking about our life skills program? All right. So our life skills program, we intend to scale it because we already have a standard operating procedure, a process flow document that contains how to implement our life skills program from start to finish. So what we can do, what the plan we have in scaling is handing over this standard operating procedure to you know, volunteers who we work with and also our life skills curriculum to implement. 
And we also plan to partner with government schools in other communities and private schools in other communities to teach our life skills program. Our life skills program is run every week. So having an hour every Friday in these schools will, be, will give us the time to teach these children. And, you know, we're able to scale the life skills program through that because we already have a process flow and we already have a standardized curriculum that we use to train the children. All right, um, real quick. Now, first of all, you say your curriculum is standardized. By what standard? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Education, who? None yet. So who? You don't have that yet? None yet. Okay, so not it's yet. not standardized. Now, you have a business because the educational system in Nigeria is not doing a good job. That's why you have a business, yeah. correct? In the same way, mechanics have more work because they are potholes. Yeah. Isn't that so? So which means it's already a system in place. You know, a lot of schools have external karate teachers come teach their kids. They have people yeah. come teach music lessons, yeah. so extracurricular activities. Yeah. Is it possible to restructure your business in that capacity and attach to that? reason I'm saying that is, you see, if you depend on donors, there's donor fatigue. Mm -hmm. Donors are going to get tired and say, what are they getting in return? At some point, it's like, so which means your project will be dependent on their goodwill. And human beings are really not that good. <laughs> Keep that in mind. So if you're actually giving value to these schools, then they will say they're willing to pay a certain amount, mm -hmm. no matter how small it is. So you can take money from the rich schools and use that to support the poor schools and give hype to the rich schools. Keep that in mind. Now, another aspect mm -hmm. you should please consider is this. You see, you're targeting these low-income schools, correct? Yeah. Now, remember the first guy who presented... Um, Obasanjo, correct? Yeah. When you presented, the schools were concerned about how they would look. They don't want to look bad, knowing that you're innovating their schools for them, which is supposed to be their job. The schools don't also want to look bad because you're doing their job for them. So how are you going to make them look good and still get your social impact? So if they get the credit, what do you get in return? If you don't get the credit, what are you going to sell to those who are going to fund you? Easy. So it's an equation that you should balance but can be balanced. So if they get the credit in public and you give the credit that they receive in public to those organizations, funders, or the rich schools who then say they are supporting these other low-income schools and then they get the credit. So essentially what you have to give is credit. Consider yourself extracurricular activities because you are not standardized or regulated at the moment. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Yes, it makes a lot of sense to me. Thank you very much, sir. I th well done, all of you, and I think you and the lady before you. Um, what I sense is you're approaching your model more from the point as an almost an NGO type thinking, and I think you have to re rework your strategy to put more, at least, social innovation entrepreneurial cap. So when you think about as an entrepreneur, there is a larger market. On your project, I actually think that you, there is still a very large gap of technology, and I want you to start thinking technology in terms of how you deliver and deploy value. Uh, you have to think technology, you have to think gaming, mm. you have to think content. Mm. So what you're trying to do are things you can actually create in terms of all the life skills you want to teach, are content you can create as series. Mm. You can monetize via YouTube by growing a YouTube channel yeah. and reach way more kids and earn money every month, right? Mm. And you can still deploy in schools, right? As something you can do as a CSR or you can do in partnership with the schools to make them look good mm. and argument for the gaps that they have. Mm. So I, I think that um, when, you, when you think of it as a tech solution, yeah. you can go Y Combinator, you can go MES. They have different platforms that can help you expand on your value proposition. So I'll, 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 I think that's where I see you moving on. You can do for schools, but as a CSR, after you've made the money, right? But okay. content and technology means you can scale it. Yeah. Um, you can deliver it across different geographies. Yeah. And you can still monetize effectively on a regular via subscription or return customers as it were. So that's more like a thought for you to process beyond oh, here. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, can I say something on that? So we already have like our life skills commit. So in that life skills commit, what we did is that we brought together the true and deep stories, the contextual stories of the children that we work with. Is it comic? Yes. Okay. So we right. sell these comics and the comics are designed, we use the stories of these children, the, the, their real names, and then we infuse life skills um, stories into them. So for example, we're talking about self-awareness or we're talking about sexual hygiene.
but we're using Toby. So when they're reading a book, they're not seeing a white person and they're not because... But why don't you have it here as part of your revenue model? Because that is it's huge. There. Okay. Yeah, life skills. The other part of it, if you think about that much, um, the idea of gamifying it is also important. Yes. If you gamify that, you can sense it to people that can adapt it and make mm. it... Yeah. You it mm. uh, stands out. Okay. Mm. Mm. okay. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate that. Thank you. No other comment from the judges, right? Thank you very much. Please let us appreciate Aramide Kayode for her presentation. Thank you so much for that. We're going to take the next presentation, which is the last but not the least. And it is presentation by Odinaka Chuku Nwosu. He is the founder of Virtual Excursions. Please let's listen to him. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, our dear judges and guests present. My name is Odi Nakachuku, as I said, and I'm the founder of Virtual Excursions. Do you know that as of today, 80% 80 of the schools in Nigeria have been unable to go for excursions for the past three years? This is because of insecurity, fear of accident and death, bureaucratic bottlenecks in schools, which you see every time when, as a teacher, parental consent, so many factors. And even when some of these schools go for excursions, they cannot take every child. They limit the number. Then it becomes worse if that child is differently abled. He will not join. But today, we have designed a solution that can enable schools, teachers, embark on excursions, learning excursions from the comfort of their class, cutting all these constraints, and that will be using virtual reality technology. By that, it allows every child to be carried along and helps to answer the need for every child to have quality and inclusive education, which we all look out for in the SDG goals for. When you talk about this absence of excursions, there's a very large market. Lagos alone has about, about 18,573 schools, according to the Commissioner of Education, Mrs. Um, Fash Mrs. Adefisayo by 20, 2019. So if we harness only a percentage of about 1.5% of these schools in Lagos alone, I'm not talking of Africa, and we are looking at 297 schools, we'll be able to make at least 29.7 million naira from our first year of operation if we charge these schools for our premium content a paltry sum of 35,000 naira per term or 100,000 naira per session. Aside that, we plan to generate a lot of money to run this solution by partnering with revenue sharing, um, having revenue sharing partnerships with established edtech companies like ULESSON, maybe schooling car tomorrow, and so many others. We also plan, we are also working on grants and sponsorships from organizations that are like fast, fast um, FM, FM SG, the, the fast-moving consumer goods companies that have products that are related to children in schools, like the Nessies and Cabri. We plan on engaging them and doing advert for them and making money from it altogether to support the smaller schools. Already we have a growth plan. We have gone further to discuss with the Nigerian Commission for Museum and Monuments, and we are about to close a deal with them that will have exclusive access and content to special places in Nigeria and museums. Because in those places, you cannot take picture there. But we'll do it. We'll have these excursions in those places. And it will be created for sale and consumption around the country and even outside. What do we need to run this project? I already have a team. I already gained knowledge in this field. And I've developed 
a minimum viable project. So what I need now, what we need, is about 27 million naira to start. But we know we cannot get all that money here. We came to ask for a grant, a seed fund of 1 million naira. This money we want to use to procure a high definition 360 degrees camera and set up a very basic web platform so that students in many of our schools can begin to access. We already have many schools wanting to our solution, even as of today, and many teachers. We've done a survey, and this is a need, and we want to fill this market. Our judges, our audience, this is why we are here. They just help us achieve this goal. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Odina Kachuku. We'll take questions from the audience. We can take up to two. Are you the only person? Okay, second person. Um, thank you, Odinaka. That was um, both educating and hilarious. Thank you. Um, so I have a question, and I also have feedback, I think, so that we don't waste time. My colleague was just sharing, the market sounds big that you don't need to limit to schools, so I don't know why you are limiting to schools. And then um, my question is, my assumption is that this product is not for every learner, right? Because um, looking at the cost and everything, obviously not everyone can afford it, right? Um, what's, are there any plans in place to ensure that um, it's available to every learner, right? And then uh, I'm also thinking, what stops me as a school who has the means, right? I don't want to mention the names to just take this over from you because I think I've had an experience um, similar to that where I can afford to just buy it out from you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The solution is designed to cover for all the students. So we have in our content, we have premium content. That's why I talked about exclusive access to some special places in Nigeria. That's premium content. Schools will pay for it. The other content is free. We want the child in Ishaga, you know, would they to be able to, engage, to be able to learn. I know how this inspired the students in my class when I taught. And even the students of some, some, some fellows here when I went to their schools. So we are not limiting it. It's for all schools. And it's simple. You know, before now, people think VR is too complicated. I went, I learned about it. Now, with an ordinary headset, which is costing at least now in the market because of the inflation, about 10, 15K, you could have an immersive experience in the class. And with any phone designed from about from 2016 and above, you can enjoy that experience. So with a good teacher in the class, and with that 15K, and when we begin this project, you know, when we're talking about sponsorship with, with some people, We'll be able to run that in some of the schools we want to reach out to easily. But take note, we are starting as a social enterprise and not, um, not an NGO. Yeah. So that's it. So, yeah, you have a question? Okay, so why are we limiting to schools? Of course, we could, before now, we, our team taught. We would have made this solution to be easy for everybody. Even a parent at home can get it. But you know what? When we begin to serve that market, their demand will be different because we've done an analysis. Individuals are asking for more gamifications. They want fun. They want to be able to jump this and jump that. But we designed it in such a way that it can, the teacher can have what we call guided learning. So that is why, first of all, we are designing it for school. Then in the future, when the market expands, we can enter the other level. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, um, Odinaka. So my question is just like, I'm concerned about, because I took my kids for an excursion to Abelkuta, and the reason was to do beyond their present community. And there's also um, experiential learning that just helps you beyond Oh, okay, my teacher showed me a lion, but I want them to see it. It goes beyond. In fact, we live in a village. So it's different from seeing um, a snake just passing by to learning about the characteristics of a cobra and just seeing how the lion lives. 
So I'm just curious about your value proposition for this project. And also, I'm wondering what you are already doing. Maybe, you know, have you visited some of these days and you are seeking permission to say, can I take videos and all of that? And you're able to create content for that. Like, I didn't see that in your presentation. And I'm also concerned about what value you have over experiential learning. Thank you very much. If let me just go. When I talked about having um, partnership with Nigerian Commission for Museum and Monuments, these people are in charge of all the heritage sites in Nigeria, exclusive and non-exclusive. So as I'm talking to you, we've already discussed with their with their with their board with their director. When we have access to them, we'll be able to reach a place that your school or even you will not be able to reach. And we have, a, we have why it is also part of um, a social enterprise, because they are already telling us that they are going to receive a percentage of the assets. So that's why that part, a premium assets cannot be free. Because normally if you want to engage, want to go to such places, you pay. But now you'll be paying something smaller, gaining more, going to more places. Okay? Then when you talk about experiential learning, I bet you cannot take your students from Ogun State to the warm, um, to the war museum in Uma here, or to take them to Aso Rock in Abuja. Can you? Oh, I if you can, then I okay. I don't want to talk much, but you know it's almost impossible as a as a teacher because you cannot take all your students and get all the permission to fly them to that place. And but with our solution, the difference is that with VR there will be an understanding of the space and position. It's not like watching a video. You'll be there. That's the difference. All so right, that right. experiential yeah. learning is available. Thank you. Odenaka. Sir. All right, good afternoon. First, the platforms you are discussing with to secure exclusive access to their content, has any of them signed? OK. It's a yes or no? No. OK, I understand. Um, first, I don't think they're going to sign. That's one. Um, but that, that doesn't mean this is not a fantastic business. Now, first, what the gentleman said regarding limiting it to schools is crucial. This is why. Because even right now, I'm installing apps that already are executing what you are trying to do. But keep in mind, these are from other countries, and they are showing their tourism spots. Dubai was a very poor country a few decades ago. How do you think they made their money in the first place? Oil. Now, how do you think they make money? Tourism. There you go. Now, with COVID, like you said, tourism was held back. But people still want to see and have that experience. So what Dubai is doing is pretty much engaging people like you to convert physical tourism to virtual tourism. So schools are excellent target for your CSR which is good however let me say this to you now once you run this for schools somebody else will take a look at this and create it and sell it to the whole country and sell it to the world and somebody from Argentina can visit the Benin Kingdom virtually on their phone and it was you who started it so you have to think bigger than you're thinking right now. Now, regarding access to funds, you see crowdfunding for you. You, are, you have the easiest access to fund right now. In fact, 27 million is actually small. You see, when you go online, there are people who say they're going to patronize you, correct? Let them pay in advance. And they are willing to pay. It's not a lot of money. So go online, check out platforms like Reddit. People can have conversation, conversations with you and test your product. And then there are also crowdfunding platforms where put some of the basics of what you are doing, be transparent with your funding, people will pay money in bits. If First, you're going to open it across the world because you're selling Nigeria. So imagine you're selling Nigeria. You start getting attention on the digital platform. You're selling Nigerian tourism. Do you think it will be long before the Minister of Tourism calls and says, hey, where's that guy? So do you think money will be an issue? So do you think money is the real issue? Money is not the issue. It's how big you're dreaming. That's the challenge. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let me just say something. 
last year, I discussed with the Commissioner for Tourism in Cross River State, and um, we are still in talks because we are about to and we are about to to do something big about Sam. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Thank you very much, sir. Wow. Okay, Thank you. Uh, well done. Uh, Thank you, sir. And, um, again, uh, this is a very brilliant idea. The thing is, um, look, start, start small, but start well. And all these other initiatives, you build on them and keep moving. One of the things that is critical is, you know, and apply, apply to everyone that is here, think of structure, think of people, think of process, think of technology, and think of culture that kind of um, is the umbrella for every other thing that you are doing. And after all said and done, trade market. So even if, even if somebody in Brazil wants to now access it, if, if they decide to make money from it, the more money they make, the more money you make. Exactly. So, so you must put in place at the beginning the right uh, structure and the regulatory design you need to get. So trademark is one thing that must immediately, we must, must do like right away, like yesterday, we haven't done it yet. Apart from incorporation. So, I mean, but I think you're, you're going to be fine. Thank you very much, sir. It's a brilliant idea. Thank you for thinking this. And uh, we can only wish you the best. Um, you say you need 27 million, although you have said it, it's truly a small money. But when you look at 27 million, 1 million, what would you do with 1 million? How impactful? Okay, so actually, if for the meantime, there are some. Sir, I know this. Now, you see, when you're checking things online, okay, let me, I, have, I have one already. I have one already, but it's, it's 4K. 4K resolution, and I want 8K resolution. So that's the difference. So I know it very well. What yes, I would say, to be sincere, um, what you are doing just reminds me of this. Um, is it Lions Den or is it they do it on TV? Yeah. Do you know what? Before um, um, we started the pitching, myself and Tosin were just talking here and we we're still talking about trademarking. I'm telling you, this is real life. <laughs> that you do. So you need to consider that. But what I would just say, this is a fantastic idea. In fact, at, at, as you allow yourself to go through mentorship, attract the right, go for the right people that you need to guide you. Doctor says something, start well. Go for, even if you have to take a year, whether you have a camera, make, it, make that um, this, um, mentorship thing a real thing for you. Then go through it so that you don't make something. Like I learned, I was just telling him that I learned that the guy that uh, formulated origin sold it to Guinness for four million naira. Do you know how much Guinness <laughs> they are making from that origin drink now? Yeah. So it's really a big thing that you can't play with your mentor. You can't even go online. Whether you have to go through LinkedIn, look for that. As in, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sorry, sir. He's a mental. I'm happy. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Please, let's put our hands together for Odina Kachuku Uosu. This, this has been an amazing time, and um, it has been intriguing, I would want to say. And the fact that I love the way the judges were drilling them. You know, um, I, was, I was part of this. I was part of the first 10 innovators that passed through um, this um, second cohort of the innovation. And 
There's this question that Mr. Ayodeji would ask. Why would people want to use their own money and pay for what you are doing? Why must it be your own? They can choose to, if your own does not exist, will they not find something else? So all of that is going deep to the fact that you need to know the why for what you are doing. You get, and you need to seriously get to understand that. He told me a story during the session that I had with him, the advisory session, and it was like he had this aunt, and she used to cook for them when they were growing up. And then every time that she cooks, she beats them if they don't tell her that that food is sweet. So all they have to do is, ah, uh, mommy, uh, obeno, doom. ah, that food was so sweet. Just that she's, she's happy and they are also saved from the lashes and all of the beating you get. So she was satisfied with all of that and then she had that in her mind and then she went ahead to establish a restaurant business. Tell me what will happen. Huh? <laughs> you cannot beat people in the market to accept that your food is sweet, right? So ultimately, the business is going to crumble. And so you need to, as innovators, begin to look around ideas and see how to really tweak your models and make it in such a way that the target market gets to accept and then because they are receiving value for it. So please, once again, let us put our hands together for all the five amazing innovators who have presented here for us today. It has been awesome. It has been beautiful. We want to thank you so much. So the judges, we cannot thank you enough. We appreciate the work that you do. And um, so for now, we're going to allow the judges to go out and then go do their collation and put together all that they can put together. And then when they come back, <coughs> the gang, 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 gang will start. So please, let's put our hands together for our judges as they go out. Please, you can continue to do that. Please, please, let's appreciate them. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. So we are going to go to the next item on our program of event. And it is for us as second year fellows with Teach for Nigeria who are here today, those who are joining us online on all of our platforms, that you get to know that as a Teach for Nigeria fellow, when you become an alum, there is this pathway that you can go. We had a session, a master class the previous weekend, right? And it was about how to make your ideas businesses, right? That can give you profit, that can give you something that you can leverage upon when you leave the fellowship. So we are going to share with us a video of the second cohort of the Teach for Nigeria Alumni Incubation Hub, the processes as it did play out. So please sit back and enjoy. Hub program is Teach for Nigeria's initiative towards supporting our alumni to scale their project. It's really been engaging. Um, it's been a learning experience for me. In the last three years, I thought that I really have positioned everything that I would need to run a successful enterprise. But coming to the incubation of, um, there's still a lot of work to be done. I'm beginning to remodel my structures, focusing on what I really want to achieve in terms of impact. The last two days, I've had the privilege of facilitating sessions on leadership. Um, and in that class, we had some brilliant Teach for Nigeria fellows 
who are being positioned to go and change the education industry. During the two days, the questions that they asked, the worries that they projected um, in trying to find solutions to what they're doing, proved to me that without a shadow of a doubt, what Teach for Nigeria is doing is not only important, it's needed, and in one way or the other, it gives everybody hope that the change that we're looking for will happen because for young people like this to want to leave the private sector and go and touch lives in the public sector um, with everything that happens in that space means that there's hope for Nigeria. We have projects um, that started uh, mostly from BD Change Project um, at the early stage, at the prototype stage, and um, they come into the incubation hub program. The, they are being exposed to training, resources, mentorship, and um, also access to um, seed funding, which will um, all go into um, the whole uh, project that they are working on and uh, see them scaling this project to become full-fledged um, startup. Starting this program has been very insightful, very interesting, very engaging. I've been able to learn a lot about business, starting up a business, the legal aspect, the tax aspect, the digital marketing aspect, and the human resource aspect. And I have better understanding of how to run a business and how to scale it to the next level. The bootcamp has provided me the opportunity to actually meet captains of industry, meet influential people, and network with them, discuss business, and also learn more about their experiences, past failures, and you know, learning more about how to be successful in the business world. For the remaining days of the incubation period, I'm looking forward to gain more experience from the facilitators, to get more ideas on how I can improve on my projects, um, to network with our fellow entrepreneurs that are here, and also looking forward to get uh, more knowledge for my pitch presentation so I can attract more investors for my projects. For the past one week, this program has been exceptional. I, it is not just eye-opening, it teaches you all that you need to be able to play well in the social, in, in the social space. This program talked more about social impact and how businesses can be in the social impact yet make a whole lot of money and be sustainable. I've really learned a whole lot and I thank Teach for Nigeria in partnership with EDC for coming up with this kind of program. It is top notch. I have attended many kind of um, programs for businesses, but this one is exceptional. Thumbs up to Teach for Nigeria every time. I'm not surprised Teach for Nigeria is doing this much because um, she has always shown commitments to develop her alumni uh, for them to take their rightful position in the different space and different sphere of life that they wish to, to work in and also um, impact. my business more formally initially we are running with a non-profit model but throughout this um, past few months when we have been taking up the incubation of courses and programs i've been able to restructure it and bring in a re revenue model that will make it more sustainable for us also i've been taught on how to reward our founders and grantors and this has strategically positioned us more to receive more funds within the next two to five years. So I've been able to structure my board, how to make my board active, and ensure we recruit the right members for our board who can influence my business positively and leveraging on their powers and prowess to be able to. It's just been fantastic um, spending the last three days here teaching and talking about social impact the impact on people and the impact on the planet. And one thing that I want everyone that has been part of my training to take away is to repeat, apply, and practice what they have learned to ensure that they don't, they don't just listen, but they actually practice it. So I want all of the participants that have attended this training to transform their businesses, to transform stakeholders and people that engage with them on a daily basis. I want a situation in which after today, five years from now, 
one year from now, three years from now, they will look back and say, yes, their business is truly making a positive impact in Nigeria, in Africa, and in the world. Teach for Nigeria is a non-profit um, organization that is focused on solving the problem of education inequity in Nigeria. And uh, part of the ways that we um, do that is through the Teach for Nigeria Fellowship, which is um, a two-year fellowship program where we recruit young and outstanding graduates across several educational and um, professional backgrounds to teach for a period of two years um, in underserved um, and low-income community um, schools. And uh, in this period of two years, they are supported by their coaches to lead outstanding uh, academic and non-academic um, outcome for children, for these um, children in low-income communities. Let us put our hands together for, for Teach for Nigeria Alumni Development Unit. This, they, are, they are the ones that spearhead this incubation hub. And just as I said when we started, this incubation of ideas and transitioning BTC projects from the fellowship into viable businesses and enterprises was something that began as far back as in 2020. So that was when we had the first cohort of innovators pitch, and they were able to get the grants. So for us today, um, just as the CEO said, everybody is a winner, right? All the 10 innovators, all the five that did pitch for us today, they are all winners. Um, but by the end of today, we'll be having two of five persons that have pitched for us today leave this place with the sum of one million naira each. Is that, is that not something that is exciting? Uh, can we put our hands together for, for Teach for Nigeria, for our partners, for our donors, for EDC, for giving, and a whole lot of other um, partners and friends of Teach for Nigeria that continue to work with us. So we want to go to the next item on our program, which is the presentation of certificates. So these 10 innovators haven't gone through the three months of training and virtually and for the physical training that also happened, fortunately, right here at EDC. Um, they have successfully completed the incubation, and so they are receiving certificates for that. So for us here, we have, um, so I'm going to be inviting the members of staff of Teach for Nigeria who will be helping us present certificates to them. So I would love to humbly begin with my very own boss, the head of training and leadership development, Ms. Flora Gaptoni. Please, let's put our hands together for her. So please, we would have Fola Shade Baba Tunde. Please, let's put our hands together for her as she receives her certificate of completion. Thank you very much. Next is Zainab. Um, yes, put our hands together for her as she receives her certificate of completion. It's not easy to go through all the visual sessions and the personal learnings and all of that. Please. Next, that would help us present will be our own HR manager, uh, Ms. Attractor Kanebi. Please, let's put our hands together for her. So we have Bright Kemasode. Please, let's put our hands together for Mr. Bright. Awesome. OK. 
Okay. She would also help us present to Aramide Coyote. Put your hands together for her, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Attractor, for obliging to help us. Next to help us present would be Mr. Edikang Mbang. Please, let's put our hands together. Our lead or impact teach for Nigeria will help us present certificates. The first to receive will be Odina Kachuku Ngosu. Put our hands together for him. Please. Also, you help to present to Olua Sheung Kayode. Please, let's put our hands together for him. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mr. Edikang. And to help us do the final presentations is um, our recruitment and um, matriculation um, is a specialist or manager. We want to call her. It's not easy, <laughs> so she helped us present to Obasanjo Fajemi Rokum. Please, let's put our hands together for him. So I'm going to, please, there's one more person. Please, yes, so I'm going to drop the, the heart of being an MC and then I'll collect my certificate. <laughs> so my name is Michael Yoko. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for joining us for this event and being with us thus far. We have Very soon we'll be done with this um, program. Um, the next item is the announcement of winners, um, which we're going to give uh, our judges a few more time to collate. And then when they come with the result as it is, then we'll know who our winners are, after which we'll present the checks to the two winners. Um, those that are going with one million naira each, and we take vote of thanks, and then closing remarks, and also would have lunch, and have time to network as well. So please, um, DJ, for the meantime, judges are collating. Can you give us? Can we return back to our seats? Our judges are 
here already. Let's be seated. So we are moving gradually, gradually to the moment that we have all been waiting for. Um, I can feel the deep breathing. Mm, that's good. That's awesome. So yes, um, congratulations once more. Just as we said, everybody that is here today is a winner, right? You are awesome. It was magnificent. All the ideas that you had so before we do the announcement of the winners we're going to um listen to our judges to tell us from all of the pitch that we've had today and just give us a general um, overview of what has happened what they need to take note of going forward with their businesses and how they did well how they did not do that was good enough so just general like that feedback so please would like you to put your hands together as dr isa omago gives us that okay um, good afternoon everyone thank you for um for coming thank you for the attention thank you uh, to teach, uh, teach for nigeria for opportunity for us to be able to come here and interact with um, this brilliant set of um, younger people younger than us you know and um, 
I think that for me, so when, when my children were much younger, I used to encourage them to participate in competitions. Hello, hello. Thank you. I used to encourage. Yeah, I think it's fine. So I used to encourage them to participate in competitions, and I, I, I used to advise that, you know, it is when you don't make effort to participate that you fail. At the moment you take a decision, for example, in a, in a school where there are maybe 500 students, and you do um, some preambles and then uh, preliminaries, and then you now succeed in presenting your house in the school, whether for swimming or for athletics, it doesn't matter. I mean, one day my son ran. Um, did this thing and he came, he came last. And I told him, don't, don't ever stop running until you get to the end of the to finishing line. So they also encourage parents to, to, to do parents' uh, race. And then, you know, one day I was running that race, I said, I, I cannot come last. And if I come last, I must uh, breast the tape. So what I'm saying, not sure is that, I mean, there were 10 people originally. Out of the 10, five um, um, were finally um, selected. Out of the five, we understand that it's not because the other two are better or are best, but because there are also a limit of. Uh, in terms of this grant, um, I already mentioned donor fatigue. So there's a limit to how much uh, uh, donors can give at a particular point in time. So I think the only time you don't win is when you don't run. So um, as journey worker, I would say for those of you who are witnesses to journey workers' uh, bylines, whatever your journey, keep uh, working. So it's a good thing to be here at this, at this point. And I think in terms of feedback, um, I, I'll start with the person Joe. Person Joe talked about um, the BYT and basically looked at. Uh, improving infrastructure um, uh, of schools and beyond infrastructure, even though the emphasis was a lot more on infrastructure. But there was a second part of it that you didn't really dwell on much. I mean, first of all, the concept is all the concepts are very are brilliant. Then you mentioned infrastructure, uh, uh, fixing school infrastructure, and then there's a second part. That second part for me is also very uh, relevant to the things you are pursuing, but you didn't really um, uh, speak to those things. And in this age and time, there's a possibility of some of the things you do being um, um, enabled technologically. That's why earlier on I talked about structure, process, people, technology, and culture. So the challenge that we think um, uh, you probably will have um, is the fact that there are issues that have to deal with um, 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 life, um, um, school bureaucracies in schools. There are challenges you may have with community, the various stakeholders that as was mentioned. I mean, I've, you've got the feedback anyway. You know, so but the idea has already been vetted, and the challenge is now how to put in place the right um, uh, structure that will help this idea to become like really um, something that you can eventually that has growth potential and that can cause the subsequent social impact that's required. So you have to go back again based on the feedback you've gotten from here, and then try to see how you can um, tweak your model and see that for, for improvement. And I, when you teach business plan, one of the things to tell you is that it is not every, every idea. That when you now go into visibility and you try to put up a plan that you eventually pursue, so there are times when you have to like really look at it again very realistically and make some necessary changes. Um, second place was school linker. I mean, okay, I think some of us are a bit um, maybe biased technologically, but ultimately uh, it was a fantastic presentation. The slides were, you know, like really uh, home with us, and you had very good grasp of the um, subject um, uh, matter. You know, and then some of the issues that you need, need to consider have also been, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it took, the, it took point, took note of the points that um, the various judges uh, uh, raised. But I think that's something that, like you said, I think it's Pan-African and it's going to really go uh, very, very well. I don't know whether this one has a trademark component, but clearly, the discussion one, trademark, but I don't know why schooling can also need to uh, consider uh, trademarking. So that by the time you scale and you now uh, people are begin to try and infringe on, on those, uh, this thing, not be able to make uh, uh, claims, but I think it's something that's going to uh, really make a lot of difference. And, 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 and it will be, be too difficult for you to like really raise the funding that uh, you need to um, scale ultimately. Um, um, Zainab, that's a um, smart garden. You know, all of us are already planning to come and meet you to give us your product, and uh, for us to be able to use it to in a small space in Lagos. To begin to really do this farming. I think it's something that is brilliant. I understand we're discussing during the collection that we understand that you were trying to keep the thing to teach for Nigeria the scope to just have to do with schools. And that's why, you know, but as you have seen from some of the feedback, these ideas are they, they like oak tree, they're going to grow into something much bigger and better than you are even imagining 
for low-income communities and just looking at um, school environment alone. So the thing is, you really, really need to sit down and make this thing work. And you need to get um, the right... Another thing you need to work on is... Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, because if it's me, I, I would have um, done, gone to some of these people. People are in the same class now. You are, you are friends. So what I've looked at, uh, you can share your slides and try to raise a bar for every other person. So you need to work on your slides more. So if you're coming to meet uh, people that are going to provide some funding, you need to be able to like really let the things speak to them beyond what you're saying so that they can... Even when you don't say, they will see it in the quality of your slides. So you need to tweak, improve the quality of your slides. But the idea is brilliant, and I think it's going to work. Um, um, even amongst... Because yeah, beyond just the fact that uh, it's agriculture, it's also education, and it's also empowerment. And people are, the young people are also going to learn from when they are young to their like, skills to um, when, when they get, get, get much older. Talent, uh, talent um, Mining <laughs> Academy. Okay, so brilliant presentation. You could have been a bit, you could have been a bit um, louder. You know, I'm more sensitive to, to the environment. What I did, what didn't come out very clearly to me was what the unique value position was. You know, is it that you're running your own school separate? Or you're collaborating, you know, every, I, 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 there wasn't enough for everybody to speak. So, you know, but, so is it that you're running your, your own academy separately and you're going to enroll students? Or that uh, you're collaborating with um, people that already have uh, existing existing and trying to pick up people that will benefit from your initiative. And I think there's a bit about content. You know, and uh, the, the need for you to like really look at that because that, it's that life skills. I'm not sure it's very strong in curriculum. So, are you also thinking of collaborating for curriculum development? Because you have seen gaps with respect to um, uh, the way that kids have been trained these days, and that gap needs to be filled, especially if you want to be glo globally competitive. The new lingo is not really new, but they say think global, act local. That's local. So we need to all get very localized mindsets. So what is it that you're thinking of that is global? How can you localize that global thought in the schools in terms of your offering? And you may now need to begin to do like um, I already mentioned. This is around the um, YouTube channel, Facebook channel and then own that content. And again, it's important that you take care of regulatory, uh, this thing off from like trademarking where, where it is applicable or what is that one called? Oh, copyright, whatever uh, rights I need to do. Um, um, special excursion. Ex Odnaka has a very good, good grasp for. I think he actually enjoys uh, <laughs> enjoys this journey has embarked upon. Because it's also a very brilliant, uh, brilliant um, submission. Two things that also came out very clearly between Odinaka and um, um, Obas, um, no, sorry, Sheung is that they, apart from telling us what it is that they are doing, how they are doing it, and how it's solving problem, they went straight and said, "This is one million I'm looking for," because they know it's one million they are going to get. This is what I'm going to use it for. So it was very specific in that submission. Onaka mentioned web platform and uh, camera. You mentioned that you want to employ a growth, growth something something manager. I mean, that was, that was specific. So for me, just say, okay, at least, you know, but the other ones were a bit like, they just there. So where, where, if, I give, if I give this one million, what are they going to do with it? it? It didn't come out very clearly to me. So it was a bit, uh, I, was a bit I was a bit hanging. But these two, uh, Onaka and uh, this, we just said, one million, growth manager, one million, camera, and web platform. Know, and then so it was very clear so i i, I think uh, I, get, I hope this has been very helpful and i think i like to by this point thank you very much and good luck you guys are going to do very well and sorry i'd like to say one more thing so this particular one is like a twin um this thing first of all you are young two you seem to believe in the country three you're talking about education and lastly you're talking about entrepreneurship that youth a combination of youthfulness ability to be able to create value education and entrepreneurship if we have more people like you in this country then nobody can see a bright light in the world and they are already, they are already afraid of us in the world anyway so you can imagine what will happen when you guys really get it right and you get it right by god's grace thank you wow that's awesome thank you so much thank you um once again congratulations everybody is a winner so to do the announcement of the top two, the winners that will be living here with the check of one million naira each, we have a short video from our CEO who is with us live virtually.
Here is the moment we've all been waiting for. Congratulations! Are you sure it's not network? I said something now. Please, I think you should check the network. Um, it's those on YouTube and Facebook, there's network. There was, there was, shh, Abby. No, I said, I, I mentioned it. Oh, you did not hear. Ah, that's serious. So, please, let us put our hands together for Mr. Fedi. As he would, in collaboration with... Miss Ade Dolako announce our winners. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, like we have emphasized here, everyone is a winner. The new capital is not money, it's collaboration. And whether or not you're living here with the money, in this room, you have all the monies you need in the contact and the network you build. But it was for us very specific. This is Teach for Nigeria, and the focus of Teach for Nigeria is to improve the quality of the learning experience and to empower teachers to scale. While we fell in love with every idea that was presented here, we narrowed to two based on specifically on the mission of Teach for Nigeria. So ladies and gentlemen, permit me to present to you our two winners. The first runner-up is Virtual discussion, Odinaka Chuku Rosu. And the winner, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, I guess we'll present this first, then we'll go to the. Yes, let's continue to appreciate them. Let's put our hands together for them. The winners of the one million Naira virtual competition pitch for 2022. School linker and virtual excursions. Congratulations. 
Congratulations, congratulations. This is awesome. So go out there, just as you said, ambition the 27 million that are written on it. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you very much to our judges. Thank you so much to my brother. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations are in order. Awesome, awesome. Number one and nothing less. Lead me to my destiny. I have waited patiently. I have vision, though I believe. I know I can count on me. So stand up for the champion. Yes, so we'll do congratulations more. Let us let us be seated. Let's be seated a bit. Let's be seated a bit. Yes, congratulations are in order. These are us. Okay, please, let's sit down with beat. Let's sit down with beat. Please, let's all sit down. Sit down. Let's sit down with beat. Just allow allow the two of them alone. Yes, we'll still take pictures. There will be room for the other pictures. Please, let's all be seated. Let's all be seated for a few minutes. Please, let's be seated. Let's be seated for a few minutes. Thank you, thank you. Please, let's be seated for... Let's be seated for a few minutes. Please, please. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. This has been an amazing time. So we're just going to take brief vote of thanks. And those to do the vote of thanks for us are no other than the two winners today. So we'll begin with um, Kayode Oluwashewun and then... Thank you very much. Um, I want to sincerely appreciate Teach for Nigeria and all the partners that have made this possible for us. Um, I want to appreciate everyone in my court um, that we went on this journey together. I mean, <laughs> it's, been, it's been an amazing journey learning on those virtual classes and all these things. And I know there's something we should see on the WhatsApp group. We are all winners. Because for us to be here, we are all winners and we have something to offer to the world. And thank you so much, the panel of judges. Um, thank you so much um, for your service today and for all the advices that you've given to us and all the recommendations and all the questions that are currently in my head, right? And I'm looking for answers to. And thank you so much to everyone for coming um, and for spending or for being with us on this special day of ours. And then also to Bosset Day, thank you so much for you know, leading this effort. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm really excited that we got this money. Thank you so much. I'm really short of words, seriously. Um, I want to thank Teach for Nigeria for this opportunity. Initially, I didn't even want to, you know, apply. I was like, the money is too small. <laughs> but finally, what I have undergone, the process, is more than the money. The process is too much. So the quality of the learning, the incubation process was wonderful. In short, let me just give you a secret. Madam Bosse, <laughs> someone contacted me to help him develop his business plan and strategy to start up a business. And I just looked at my slides in EDC. <laughs> <laughs> And, I, and I'm able to collect some good money from there, but I know the story. So, but this goes to tell you about the quality of what we've learned. So, Teach for Nigeria Incubation Hub, the partners, EDC, our faculty, they were very good. We had the best of faculty. When you go and check their profile, you shout. So, I, I really want to thank Teach for Nigeria. I want to thank all my friends, um, my partners, 
Obasanjo was here when we were, I, when we were in the ideation stage. You know, around me, this class was among the first class we used to test this thing. So it's just like it's among all of us here. Femi, you know, now we came to your class. So I want to thank all of you for standing, be, um, standing beside me. But for last Shade in particular, she always advised me whenever I come. She gives me this hope that this thing will scale and one day to become success. So thank you so much. And God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations once more. So we just have um, some gifts to present to our judges. The work that you did here today, just as we said, it's not something we can even pay you for. Um, we appreciate and we do not take for granted you committing your time, your talent, and everything to the success of this um, event. So please, I would love to invite um, Mr. Tractor Kanebi would help us present the little gifts that we have for our judges. Please put your hands together for Mr. Tractor. Yes. So in no particular order, please let us put our hands together as we welcome our judges to receive their little gifts. Um, I'd like to invite um, Mrs. Adi Dolakbo Oshuntui. Please, let's put our hands together for her. Thank you so much for... Yes, we'll take uh, Mr. Ayodeji Falokbe. Please, let's put our hands together for Mr. Ayodeji Falokbe. Thank you very much. Congrats. Okay, next we'll take Dr. Isa Omagu. Oma. Yes. So, just as we were speaking earlier, the, his name, Igala name, is literally like the child of a giant, the, the child of a big person. So, he, thank you very much. Also, to receive a gift is Mr. Fedi Adimefe. Let's put your hands together for him. Thank you so much. Yes, and the last but not the least, um, Olua Tosin, Oluwayeye Taiwo. Please, let's put our hands together for her. Thank you so much. We appreciate all that you do for us. Okay, thank you very much. So, we will take the next item, which is the closing remarks, and then um, we have an order of photographs. So which we would take outside where our, our banner is. That's our, is, is, is it is silver carpet, Abby? I've not seen red there. Mm, so we have our order of photographs outside and then there will be lunch and enough time for us to network and connect with ourselves as we continue to drive the work that we do in the education space, reaching the entrepreneurial and the business ecosystem of Nigeria. Truly. Nigeria will be great again. So please let us welcome with round of applause the head of alumni Teach for Nigeria, Miss Bosede Ogidong, as she does the closing remarks. Okay. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh -uh. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm really excited. Um, wow. Wow. Like, it's over. Thank God. <laughs> so, you know, it has been a great um, time, an exciting time with this wonderful winners. And I just want to say thank you so much. So, this year we had about um, over 30 applications um, within a short period of time. And then we were able to select these 10 wonderful people. And they had to go through the, you know, ideation challenge for us to be able to select five. And like I always tell you on the group, you all are winners. And I'm so excited for the opportunities that your project, your initiative is going to open up for children in low-income communities, teachers, parents, and even people like us. Thank you so much. I think they deserve a round of applause. Um, a big thank you to all my wonderful coaches. I know I've been a pain. <laughs> so every time they're like, Bosse, don't worry, I'll be there. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. I know I'm always calling you, and I will keep calling you, so 
Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Um, Fedi, thank you. Adedola, for thank you. Um, Ayodeji, thank you. Tosin, thank you. And Dr. Isa, thank you so much. God bless you. And I want to say a big thank you to Teach for Nigeria staff. They have been so amazing. Thank you so much for standing by me. Um, it has not been easy, but um, you guys stood by me. Thank you. And to my wonderful Ella, my support staff, thank you so much. And I want to say a big thank you. We are just two in the department, so you can imagine. To my right hand man, that's Samuel here. Um, thank you so much. Um, to fellows, to alumni that are here present, thank you. And I want to say a big thank you to Enterprise Development Center. This wouldn't have been, you know, wouldn't have been able to have this. But thank you, EDC, for having us, for giving us the best faculty you could ever ask for. Um, Mr. Um, Ayodeji and Dr. Isa is part of the faculty, so you can just imagine how um, wonderful the sessions have been. Um, I want to say a big thank you to our sponsors, Snap, um, Snapco, because without them, you guys would probably not be gaining, you know, not be going home with one million naira. And I just want to say a big thank you to our board members, to ambassadors, to friends of Teach for Nigeria. I know we have here giving. Dot ng they are here is a crowdfunding platform and they have opened that opportunity for our um, for our innovators and even our alumni to be able to, to put their enterprise and their project on the um, crowdfunding platform for free so that they can use that opportunity to source for fun i think they deserve a round of applause and a big thank you to Stuten. they are here and um, for you know giving our alumni and of course this wonderful people scholarship to you know do more to learn more on tech because i realized that throughout today you know they were talking about the importance of technology thank you so much to 10 um african practice thank you street to school thank you um dolly children foundation thank you and i just want to say a big thank you to everybody and to our crew members the guys live streaming the photographers Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Please, we've not finished. Don't run. <laughs> so we've prepared, you know, lunch and networking. Please don't run. Don't worry. We are giving you the best. And please, before, we, so our lunch is two, uh, but please, the remaining um, few minutes before two, we'll kindly just go um, to the Boulevard. Um, Ella is going to direct us to just take pictures of our judges, our fellows, alumni, and of course, our innovators and winners. Thank you so much. God bless you, even as you journey back home. Please let us appreciate our head of alumni, Ms. Bossede Ogidon. Thank you so much. There's not so much to say again. It has been an amazing time anchoring this event. I am your very own, your friend, your brother. Michael Yoko is my name. I am an MC extraordinaire, so you can always reach out to me, IMC events, luncheons, fundraisers, and the likes of them. You wouldn't have to break your bank to do that. Yeah, so thank you very much once again. Of one of our mentors under the alumni mentorship program uh, wants to appreciate our uh, judges and she has this little book that she would want to present to you so please let's put us let us appreciate Olua Yemisi Adekpoju Awadele thank you so much so you just do the honors you present to thank you very much
Okay. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. So please let us just move to the boulevard and um, we'll take the order of pictures, the order of photographs, after which we'll have lunch and then we'll have time to um, network and collaborate. So once again, thank you so much for being part of the 2022 Teach for Nigeria Alumni Pitch Competition this beautiful Wednesday, um, the 21st day of September 2022. Thank you. Congratulations, 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 and really delighted to be congratulating you on winning um, this year's Incubation Hub pitch. Um, well done to you all. I'm really excited and looking forward to seeing all the amazing impact that you're going to make. Once again, a big congratulations to both of you.